today I'm going to review the um, prequel or the remake. Some people consider it both to the movie, the thing. This movie came out 2011 and it was directed by um, a guy from uh, the Netherlands and his name was Matthias something something unpronounceable. I'm sorry guys, I can't pronounce that name. Matthias something or rather. But yeah, this is this is basically uh, well, it, it originally started off as a remake, but it's actually more a prequel to the um, to the 1982 film The Thing, which I talked about yesterday. Um, let me show you the Blu-ray a little bit, and then we can talk about the actual film itself. It's a really it's a really good movie. Uh, it may not be as good as the original thing, but still a damn good movie. Here, so let me show you the Blu-ray. So this is the Blu-ray here to the thing here. Let's see, let me take off the slip cover here. It's actually a pretty nice looking uh, Blu-ray. It comes with the Blu-ray right here. Stupid codes for stupid uh, downloads for whatever reason. And the DVD version of the thing. It would have been awesome if this, this, this thing, right, from 2009 also came with the 1982 thing. That would have been an awesome set. But, you know, people, you know, they, they kind of uh, are not very good at making the Blu-ray sets these days, you know. But that's the thing right there. Boom, bam. Thank you, ma'am. See all those special features? Whoop, right there, see it. Okay, stuff. Anyways, what is the thing prequel about? Well, in the if you if you have you ever saw the original 1982 thing, there's the scene where the um they're chasing the dog in the helicopter. Well, those people are from Norway, the Norwegian team, so it's about their story. What happened was that uh, um, a team of uh, geologists who were from Norway were looking for um well, ice core samples. And while they were uh, well, well, while they were, I guess, working, they, they, they noticed a kind of a weird signal. So they um, try, were trying to look for the source of the signal. So um, they were while they were driving one time, right? And then as they're driving, the ice broke, and their car or not a car, but the little vehicle went to the ice, and they found that they discovered a ship. We cut back to America, where a woman played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Um, is um, doing like a necropsy on a uh, um, frozen bear from the ice age. So um, she's doing she's doing her thing. She gets approached by a uh, um, a professor from Norway who wants to wants her to come down to Antarctica so she can do her thing with this frozen to this frozen specimen that they found. I guess when 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 they, when they found the the, um, the, uh, the the alien ship, they also found a creature frozen in the ice. So she, uh, so she flies there, right? Um, it's not only, uh, on the way there. She flies in a helicopter, right? It's not only a Norwegian team, but it's also an American stunt, sort of an American team. There's a few American people, like um, the pilots are played by um, Joel Egerton, and um, the other pilot is played by Adewale. Blah 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 blah. He's the guy from Oz, uh, Adebisi from Oz. Um, yeah, but yeah. So, so when when she arrives there, she sees that it's actually an alien. They um. They, they take the specimen back to their uh, back to the little, the little their um, their base camp, and one of the guys, the professor who um, asked her to come to Antarctica, wants them to drill the hole so you get pieces of of, of flesh of a flesh you know, so they can, so they can analyze it. Um, the woman Kate, she says she doesn't want. She, she says it's not a good idea because who knows what kind of creature this is, right? So they do that, and eventually the creature escapes, breaks through, and they have to go hunt, hunt after it. And it's almost like it's almost like the original thing. You know, you're not sure who's who. You know, this this creature transforms monstrously to like all kinds of all kinds of other crazy creatures. It can be human, it can be an alien, it can be you know who knows what it is, right? It's just a scary, scary fucking creature. But yeah, um, I don't want to give away the ending because it's kind of a good ending. And yeah, let me tell you more about um, my thoughts on the movie. So the, I was very excited about this. Most of the time, I'm not very excited about uh, remakes. Like for example, like I wasn't excited about the RoboCop remake. But for this one, I was excited. At first, I thought it was a straight remake, but then it turned out to be a prequel, which is interesting because it's kind of like, you know, uh, it fills in the little gaps from the original story. Because the original story, or the original 1982 version, there was a lot of mysteries, you know, left. Like, like how did the Norwegian people find it? What happened to that crew, you know? And um, this movie tends to answer that, which is kind of nice, you know? It's nice to, um, it's nice to get an answer sometimes to movies that are kind of like mysterious. Because the thing is probably one of the most mysterious movies you'll ever see because, you know, it's, it's full of suspense. It's uh, um, nutty. It's uh, you know, it's like it's just a scary, scary movie. The 1982 version, but this one, I will say, is not as scary. 
I mean, it has more pop-up scares, which is, which is okay, I guess. But they don't, they don't really. The creature is more visible in this this version, I guess. Well, I guess because in this version they use CGI as opposed to just rubber puppets and stuff like that. But the creature turn, you know, uh, the changing of the creature is pretty cool in the new version, right? In the 2011 version. But it's not as funky and not as disgusting as the uh, 1982 version. The 1982 version had some pretty fucked up um, effects, and it was pretty, it could be pretty gruesome, like to your stomach, like especially the part in the 1982 version when um, the head grows out legs and grows out eyes and crawls away. That is some scary shit. In this one, though, not so bad. I mean, there are some, there are some parts where it's pretty gruesome, but it's all CGI, so it looks kind of funny sometimes. But um. Yeah, I uh, another thing that's interesting too is that this, this, this um, movie has women too. There's two women. There's uh, Kate, who's played by Mary Elizabeth Winston, and this girl named uh, I think her name was Juliet. She's played by some some other lady. She's a French lady, I think. And um, it's kind of interesting to have female dynamic because uh, females react differently. You know, this this time the 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 new the pack is female. You know, it's not so testosterone filled. You know, there's actually a little bit of sometimes a little bit more sanity because sometimes women bring sanity to the table. Um, is it better than the thing that's in too? No, I don't think so. It's a, um, I would say that it's it's probably a notch or two below the thing from that's too, but it does not make it a bad movie. If this was a movie on its own without the thing that's in too, this would have been a fantastic film. But since the bar is raised so so high by John Hopper's the thing, it's hard to like uh, it's hard to compare. But as a predecessor, as a little sister or a little brother film. This is a great movie, and the, and it's cool because the prequel it actually works. A lot of times people try to make prequels they don't work. You know, they have the episodes one through three, even though I liked them, they really didn't work to be honest. But the thing, 2011 really does work very well, and it's entertaining. I've seen it probably eight or nine times in my life. I saw it twice in the theater, and I loved it. You know, I thought it was very very well done. Um, it's spooky, it's scary, but not as scary as the original. Um, it's cool that you have women there too, because sometimes you know, it's fun to see the you know, women you know, being badass, you know, because she's the one that's carrying around the, the you know, the, the uh, blowtorch or whatever, or the torch gun, or whatever the fuck it's called, flamethrower or someone, Flame blowtorch, <laughs> flamethrower, but yeah, so, um, let me show you the Blu-ray one more time and get you guys on your way. So once again, this is the thing, um, let me, let me try to pronounce that guy's, uh, name again, the director, director is Matthias Van, Van... I don't know, something that's a hard name, but he's from Amsterdam, and sir, I praise you for your good efforts on this movie. Um, it's available on Amazon, it's pretty cheap now, I believe it's only like eight eighty eight or eight ninety four on Amazon, and it's you know, almost as cheap as, as the original, and, and I think sometimes you can offer both of them in a set. I would highly, highly recommend this movie, because it is, it is a good prequel, it is a movie that does deserve some credit, because... You know, um, I know, I know, I know. It has to, um, it has to uh, live to its predecessor, but it's still a damn good movie. Um, once again, this is the thing. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. The loud soundtrack you hear behind me is the actual OST from the 2011 version of the thing, which is a little bit different than the original. You know, the original was a little bit more, um, a little bit more 80s, I guess the word. You know, uh, the original was done by. Um, by um, Ennio Morricone, who uh, does uh, a lot of the Western movies. He did the movie U-Turn. But this one here is by Marco Beltran, which is a little bit more modern guy. More of, more of a Hans Zimmer type style, you know? Anyways, if you like this video, please thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. And I hope you guys enjoy this, this video. Take care.